Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, and other role players. Tune in every week for our latest episode. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to About the Winelands. Today I'm talking to Callan Williams. Callan is um, the founder of the Garagist um, Winery and um, welcome to About the Winelands, Callan. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very excited. Oh, I'm glad um, that you are with us and you're spending the time. I know everybody's uh, busy. But Callan, I have to ask you, your name of your winery and the origin, this, yes. this sounds, tell us, um, um, I, was, I, was, I was wondering about this and I'm sure our listeners would be interested to hear this story. So the garagiste, um, it actually comes from a French term, which uh, is the garagiste movement, which happened in the 1950s. It was a rebellious movement where the, the winemakers were actually just fed up of their wine being rated um, via appellation instead of really the quality that was in the bottle. So they banded together and uh, they made wine in their garages and this wine was picked up. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was uh, by Robert Parker, uh, mm -hmm. rated highly, um, you know, sought after boutique. And since then, the term has just become more widespread. Um, and now, you know, there's, there's garages all over. Um, you know, we also like to term ourselves independents, where we're not actually linked to a wine estate. We operate um, on our own. So, you know, my whole brand, my business, I am a South African wine producer, but I don't actually own my own wine estate. I rent seller space and I buy in grapes. So, it, you know, it's just a, you know, I think one would say almost a new age way of uh, being a wine producer, although, you know, it has been around for years. I, I think it's just become a lot more, um, popular or more common, although there's very few of us as well. So it's just a, that, that's, that's where I got the term and the name. Um, and then I just spelt it phonetically, um, Garagiste, and I trademarked it. So I am known as the Garagiste and, and the brand is known as the Garagiste and the wines fall um, under that umbrella. Well, this is an awesome story. So let's go back to the beginning. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself and um, yeah, you became involved in the wine industry. Um, okay, goodness. So I, well, I'm from Zimbabwe originally. So grew up in the bush and I, I was always a ballet dancer. So I actually went to Cape Town to audition, um, you know, for the company, for uh, Carper mm -hmm. in particular. And I just, I, I reached a point where I said, you know, it's enough. I've, I've danced my entire life. I was very dedicated. I'd reached uh, certain levels, passed vocation, uh, vocational exams. And I just decided that this isn't the, the route for the rest of my life. And what I really want to do is be a farmer. <laughs> Wow. So, um, and not actually wine. I, I wanted to, to study cattle. Mm -hmm. Um, and I went to Alsenburg, uh, which is the agricultural institute attached to Stellenbosch University, uh, whereby I, I studied agriculture and then I specialized in the sciences. Um, so, you know, the, the wine degree and the viticulture degree. Um, so that's actually how I, I got into it is you, I love, I love the outdoors. I love nature. I love soil. Um, I love Indiana Jones. I just think I, I was very much on that, that route. So give me a cowboy hat and some fallies and I was sorted. Um, best years of my life. Absolutely enjoyed them. So um, that's actually how I got, got uh, you know, the rest is history, if, if you will. 
Um, and from there, I was offered a, a permanent position, which is sometimes quite rare coming out of varsity. I had been working in tasting rooms uh, and, you know, just been a, a get, gaining experience um, at some of the wine estates whilst I was studying. So I had got uh, quite a few connections. And coming out, I was offered a position as assistant winemaker at Iona in Elgin, which is where really I, I learned the ropes. You know, that's where, where you get thrown in the deep end. You realize you don't know much and you, you just start to learn everything. Um, and I just developed this love for cool climate wines. Um, some people say this a house palette where you just um, in, enjoy the, the region that you're, you're kind of based in. Um, and I really did. I learned the ropes there. Um, and it didn't take long where it's until I decided that uh, going on my own is, is the best route uh, in this country and the economy and with what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so I started up my business at the, the age of uh, 24. <laughs> and my, my first vintage uh, was the 2015 vintage, which was one of the most beautiful vintages we, we've had uh, since I've been making wine. Um, so I was very fortunate because I think... Um, you know, you, anyone could make good wine in that vintage. So I was very, I was blessed with a good vintage. Um, and uh, yeah, again, I mean, I just, uh, I had to, to go through lots of red tape and sure, it was, it's, it's been a journey and it's been extremely difficult. Um, I, I lost grapes many times. There were fires in the vineyards, strikes. I had to really wait so long for my liquor license. I really, really have um, have worked hard to get to this point. So, but it's been worth it. You know, the journey's definitely been worth it. Um, and and I'm I'm so happy that I'm still able to be producing. Well, this sounds like a real uh, garagist and um, Indiana Jones story intertwined into <laughs> one. Well, that's it, cowboy, cowgirl, cowgirl, cowgirl of the cowgirl. industry. I'm yeah. not going to ask you, or I have to ask you, can you use a whip like Indiana Jones? I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't give away all my secrets. So, you know, <laughs> I might do, I might do so. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's just a, a summary of, of the brand. Um, it is inspired by old school rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Um so I have Bruce and Jim, inspired by my favorite uh, musicians. I grew up listening to, to, you know, classical rock, Bruce Springsteen, um, Jim Morrison, Cat Stevens, Lenny Kravitz. I mean, these are all my, my favorite artists. And, um, you know, they, the wine itself is, I, I've really tried to, to make premium, beautiful, elegant wines that are versatile, that one's able to, to drink on their own or age, drink now or, you know, or they have long aging potential. So I worked hard at getting that right. Um, I'm very happy with what I've produced. And um, yeah, so currently I have the 100% Cab Franc. 100% Semillon and then I do a, a signature series every couple of years where I just make one bottle of something and I keep it a secret wow. <laughs> so many many friends and and people try and twist my arm feed me a few tequilas to to um find out what's in the bottle um and I age it for two years in barrel um and I've uh, it's a it's a collection so uh, a couple of years ago, I brought out a Jagger and I've released a Cobain and we'll see if um, what I'll be releasing next. So this is uh, all under the Garagiste uh, umbrella. So, um, yeah, that's that's again, so, just a bit more about the wines and the brand. So your, uh, your winemaking philosophy seems to be totally intertwined with uh, music and art and creativity. And all of these things, um, um, that's Absolutely. quite interesting. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. That, it's that really me in a, in, I, I'm really expressive. I think if someone knows me very well, they'll identify me to my brand. I do very much um, associate or, or I'm, I'm very linked to, to the brand. I love art and history and poetry and reading and museums. 
um, and music and, you know, the connotation between um, music and the association, the neurological association one has to, to linking it to a, a memory or an emotion. So if you listen to a song, it would most likely bring you back to a memory or a place that where you experience that song, you know, the same as with mm. wine, when you smell it, um, or taste it. It's it's really by association to what you you've experienced in the past. For example, if someone smells your grand's perfume in the glass, you know it's because you've had that association before. So I love the link between music and um, yeah, just anything emotional, neurological, and um, the fact that music brings us together, food, wine, you know, as much as it's a premium a product, I, I've created a brand that's very rock and roll, very relatable. I've wanted people to talk about wine, enjoy it, and get rid of the connotation of it being so, so snobby, you know, as people use deem the, the term reverse wine snob. I've really created that. I don't like to give people tasting notes um, i want people to really enjoy it for what they enjoy it for so you know just drink it enjoy it have fun um so yeah that that was really the brand i wanted to create something premium but but relaxed and get people talking let's let's have interesting cultivars that people don't know and they're not scared of pronouncing it's just enjoy it more. And I think, you know, in general, the wine industry, both locally and internationally, that's what we need is we need people discussing wines. We need people to, to steer away from a Merlot and a, a Sauvignon Blanc as much as we, we promote those wines, you know, let's, let's explore more. Um, so that's really what I wanted from, from the wines and the brand is to have this um, very relatable product and brand where people, enjoy it it's something edgy it's different but it's timeless um so that's that's what i've i've created and i i hope people <laughs> people also see that that's what what's been created well, i just love this because the thing is you know if you think about wine in in in, in traditional sense you're thinking about wine pairing with food you think about smell but actually the sense of hearing and the sense of music um yes. does not really come into it and um I, I, I personally think that uh, what one thing, you know, in the wider wine and for something that we need much more is live music, a live music scene. Because Ooh, um, I, yes, I, live, I, live, I lived in Chicago and that's the one thing that I, <gasps> that I experienced there that is really missing in, 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 in the whole Western Cape is a, is a you know, that, that fantastic music scene that they have. Yeah, we need Midwest. to rock and roll. I feel Absolutely. like putting my my dancing shoes on right now, putting <laughs> out my leather jacket. So do you play <laughs> do you play any music yourself? Um, sure. A few people actually ask me this. I I had started playing the cello. Um, it is my favorite instrument, and I I'd never learned music prior to that. So I, I was a year in, but um, I've since uh, put that on pause. Um, so no, I don't play anything other than that, and I, I wouldn't say I'm 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 good at it either. Um, but I do enjoy it, and besides mm. rock and roll, I mean I I love rap music, I love classical music, I listen to opera. So you know, music for me is um, what really it is. It it really is an inspiration as as much as anything artistic is um and you know wine as you were saying there's a lot of art and passion going into to my wines you know it's i love science as well so it's a great combination um you know that just the balance between science and and art um and then your own personal style as well so it's very expressive i think it's the most expressive thing I've ever really done is is make wine and um, it's like my painting or my poetry in a bottle. Well this is awesome. Your typical customer, um, who does your wine appeal to? Sure, you know I have, it's also I don't have one set target market. Um, the wines are premium so um, often you know the trade takes them on at I've, I've listed in Michelin star restaurants, fine dining spots, um, also very edgy quirky 
bars. Uh, there's a lot of um, cocktails that are made with the wines as well. And then, you know, the, the Yan the youth of today, I would say, I hope I'm still youth, the youth of today, but um, they're also enjoying it because of the branding and the, the labels um, and the fact that it's inspired by old school rock and roll. I mean, I've got my dad's generation drinking it. So it, it's, it appeals to, to quite a, a vast um, customer. I was going to say audience, but you know, mm. I, I'm quite fortunate that it's, it's, it is different, you know, it's not the typical coat of arms, branding, um, uh, wine estate look, but it, it, it's appealing to people and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So I think people just enjoy it. If it's not, you know, the, the actual wine in the bottle, it's first off the label. People speak to me directly, you know, so I'm the one behind the emails. I'm the one sending the invoices, doing the events, and posting on social media. So when people, I've got a great relationship with my customers. When people mm. buy a bottle or a case, they often WhatsApp me and send me photos or tell me how much they're enjoying it. So we develop a, a more of an intimate relationship, which most estates, you know, it's it's rare to know who is behind the, the wine making um so or who the owner is um whether i'm i'm all of it so i think that's also very appealing to customers is that they get um a, a more personalized experienced experience sorry um yeah so I, it's it's yeah i'm very grateful uh, well you know um and it's amazing your we can i can almost feel your passion for what you're doing which is absolutely wonderful that you can actually love something and do it and also um, um, find it so creative because I think that, 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 that is unique. Um, so um, where are your wines sold? Um, you were talking about wine shops and um, yes. uh, some restaurants. Are you exporting your wines? Is it mostly? I do. Um, I mm -hmm. export um, overseas um, and locally. I mean, they, they really are everywhere boutique. So they're not, they're in the likes of like a Norman Goodfellas, Caroline's mm -hmm. wine concepts. Um, a lot of smaller wine uh, boutique um, bottle stores. Um, not well. We'll see. We'll see where how far wide I can spread in the next couple of weeks. But um, that's the the general feel for them. Um, and online. So and I'm running a discount as well. So they're online, and I deliver it's free delivery around South Africa. Um, and then internationally. So I do have an amazing following um, overseas. And it's great because sometimes I, I get a photo tagged and my wine is with someone in Russia. You know, they've got their hands on it. And so I do I do export as well. Um, and it's great. It's, uh, you know, I've always said everywhere I send my wines is where I'd like to travel one day. So, you know, I've still got a long list of where I want the wines to be shelved. But um, yeah, so I export and they're based uh, locally as well. Well, that's amazing. Well, here's your chance now. You were telling, you were saying about the, the um, discount that you're offering. So tell us about yes. it. What, what can people get? You've got an audience here. Yeah? Yes, well, I'm offering a 20% uh, discount. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, people have put up their prices, especially due to lockdown, etc. I've actually discounted um, because I know times are tough and, you know, we've all got to help each other. So please, like, send your orders through. I'm actually final, you know, I've got a an order form but I've actually been finalizing a, a proper shop setup on my site which is very exciting um, and I'm running a 20% discount on uh, the wines and yes I mean I'd, I'd appreciate the support um, to just keep me in business and keep me making wines that <laughs> that's really what it's all about. I think people will definitely support you so that's for sure. Um, can you tell us, I mean, your wines have, um, I mean, there's a whole list of uh, awards on, listed on your website. So tell yes. us about, you know, all the fantastic things you've achieved. Now you're time, um, it's your time to brag now. <laughs> um, so, yes, the awards are, I mean, it, it's amazing. I, mm -hmm. I honestly was starting out, I, I didn't think I knew what I was doing 
at all, but clearly I, I do know a, a little bit <laughs> because um, I have won uh, awards for the brand itself the, and as well as the wines. Um, which is, it's, I mean, it's amazing. So I'm, I'm very grateful. I don't always enter to, to everything. It is sometimes quite costly, um, the price mm -hmm. to enter. And then you've also got to, if you, if you get a gold or a silver, et cetera, you have to give away some of your product, which is, is amazing because it, it's great marketing as well. Um, the one year I entered so many competitions that I was, um, in between Joburg and Cape Town, I was doing about nine events in one week. So wow. uh, my smile started to fade and I think I was pushing some customers away because I was so tired. So um, I have been a little bit more selective with what I've been entering. Um, and it's a great, it's great for international exposure as well. And also to just give the customer some reassurance as to your reputation as a winemaker and the wines themselves. So so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very grateful that the wines have been received so well by such, um, you know, uh, prestige competitions and international reviewers, etc. cetera. Um, and also been in a lot of, um, newspaper articles and uh, just, it's, it's been amazing exposure really since I, since I launched and since I started the, the brand. So it, it's great. Um, I, I have no complaints. So yes, I do have a lot of awards on there. Um, I, I think we'll be sharing the latest Tim Atkin awards, which is in September. Mm -hmm. We can, we can reveal those, um, which I'm excited to let everyone know. Um, and platters is still coming out and I've also entered decanter this year as well. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot uh, still to be released this coming year. Uh, sorry, not this coming year, this the, over the next couple of months. Um, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's a bit about the awards. Amazing. Tell us about Callan and Crimson. So Callan and Crimson is a side venture I do where I just offer service um, for wine clubs, launches, weddings, lectures, uh, you know, just to share my expertise that I have uh, to, to present a tasting, to chat about any wine topic. So um, often I get asked to be a part of a a wine dinner, a wine club, or a launch, and they'd like me to discuss something, um, or they'd like me to pour my wines and chat about the Elgin Valley and the difference between Cap Frank, yeah, New World versus Old World. Um, so is our connection still on? Yes, yes, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Super. So, um, yeah, so Callan and Crimson is the side venture I do where, you know, people can get in touch with me and that's the service that I provide, um, in my personal capacity, not necessarily linked to the garagiste. Um, mm -hmm. and it's actually also been received really well. So I've been invited for, um, to a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of different events. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the side business. Um, I've also, I'm about to launch an entry-level brand. It's called Chinchi. It's spelled C-I-N-C-I. -I. It means a little bit of. It's an African rooted word. Um, so, you know, I've just played on a little bit of fun, a little bit of adventure, a little bit of life. And uh, I'm very excited to launch. It's been put on pause due to lockdown and then the ban and then the next ban. But uh, <laughs> we, we will be launching soon. So that's, um, that's up and running. The site is up, uh, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to get those wines out there. And that's just a very playful, fun brand, not premium, but you know, your everyday quaffable, uh, you know, affordable wine, um, fun and light. So um, yeah, I'm excited to be launching that soon as well. Oh, that sounds awesome. Can uh, chinchi, you said. Chinchi. chinchi. It's so cute. Uh, absolutely. Very cute. It I mean, sounds like you can, you can, you can uh, do a taste on a chinchi. 
years and it sounds like you're cheersing ching, ching. Yeah. um so yeah and the fact that you know it means a little bit of uh, i think it's just uh, yeah great great marketing as well so a lot of write-ups on that if if anyone's interested to to have a look see around that that coming up brand oh that's awesome so you were talking about the lockdown and the lockdown and the lockdown and um, the coronavirus so uh, <laughs> You know, this has forced all of us to rethink our business models. So um, do you have any changes um, or new ideas in mind after this? Well, um, you know, everything is more online. And I think that's that's the route of most where most businesses have been um, pushed towards. I've always been very active on my social media platforms with my marketing, et cetera. So online for me hasn't been a much of a change, but I've had a lot of um, online tastings happening uh, where I'm connecting to the Netherlands, for example, um, things like this, Zoom, Zoom chats and, and pushing, pushing the brand on an online platform more than actual events and you know, we often often would do trade tastings, trade events where you would, you know, sh showcase your wines. A lot of it has now become more online, um, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, I think it's quite exciting. And in terms of sales, etc., I, I do think a lot of the the wine estates are going to have to to push their marketing more across social media, which not all of them normally had to do. Um, so yeah, in terms of me changing up my business, I've always had that strategy at hand. So I've just um, really enhanced it. Okay, that's all. That's that's um, awesome. So um, social media and you, like you say, you. I mean, you. I mean, you can you can hear it immediately. You're, you're a very engaging person. So um, uh, I, I think the biggest challenge in though in in um, the whole online system and the direct to consumer system is more if you're engaging, you're going to make sales. But what about the part? Um, how are you finding logistics in South Africa to actually um, get the wine to your customer as quickly as possible? Because I think that is the biggest challenge for people that are looking to go into the direct to consumer business. So, uh, generally, our services are absolutely on point um our careers are amazing uh, the wine gets to the customer within three days often the very next day um after being ordered what we're doing now is we, we you know due to this ban and the backlog we're experiencing difficulties which last time it took about a month to 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 ease out perhaps this time it, it won't take too long but you know the logistics of the the couriers can't handle the the amount of orders coming in or um wables that come in mm. then they're, they're not used to that capacity some of them have had to outsource uh, external warehousing so as a as a customer one has to be really aware and and quite patient which is so frustrating because you know as the ban you know was put in place and now they've ordered their wine they're still waiting for it um, generally, that is not the case. It's really just um, these these circumstances we find ourselves in. So once once the backlog has um, panned out and the couriers are back operating, we really have an amazing service um, services, amazing couriers. The guys um, are exceptional here, and I'm I'm I've I've never had a complaint. The wines have always been delivered very quickly so it's a it's a great way of you know just ordering online your wine arrives it's safe um you don't have to go to the trouble of trying to find it not you know some bottle stores sometimes run out of stock or you know whatever the case is so i think um yeah i think we're we're 100 percent on point it's it's just uh, due to this backlog at the moment that things are a little bit uh, slower awesome so um, your wine journey seems, I mean, very interesting. So um, what is the most important thing that you've learned so far? Um, well, the most important thing I've learned is really how fortunate I am to be, you know, working and running a business, which is my passion. 
um, and I wake up every day and I'm just, I'm really so, so blessed. I think that's something that I've, I've learned and I value highly. Um, and to just be present and embrace everything that comes my way. It's, there's a been, it's, there's a lot of struggle and diff difficulties. So just by embracing it and, uh, that that's that's you know working with what you have especially in terms of wine being a live product you you have to work with what you're given you you know it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be easy you you adapt and and change and and that's that's the most important thing and you you can't stop you know you have to keep going and you have to keep fighting so you know, to keep the brand out there, to keep your business going, to keep sales going, producing a beautiful product. And, and you've, you've got to keep your quality, quality getting, it needs to improve, I feel, every single year. So if I'm sitting as a 93 point winemaker, you know, by next year, I need to be a 94 point winemaker. I, I need to keep keep going. So that's, that's most like, yeah, I would sum it up as to, as my experience of, of what I've really taken from everything. So I ask everyone this question, but I'm going to be really interesting to hear yours. Can you give us your very own wine quote? Sure. My wine quote, or maybe a motto, I think mm -hmm. overthink wine less and enjoy it more. I think that that's, that would be my, my motto is, is, don't think about it too much. Just enjoy it more. Um, nothing worse than than sitting with someone and they just, you know, they take a, a sip or they smell the, the the wine in their glass and immediately they're bringing out faults or, um, mm. you know, trying to question it. Just think less and, and sip more. Um, that would definitely be my, <laughs> my and, and motto. And listen to good music while you're doing it, right? And listen to good music. Just enjoy it. Be present. Enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's that's really what it should all be about. Callan, if people want to get uh, um, hold of you and or they want to order your wine, where do they can? Where do they find you? And um, so that would be www.thegaragiste.co.za, and that's spelled T H E G A R A J E E S T. Um, or on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, I'm very active on there, on the pages. Um, or, yeah, I mean, that's all on my email address, but, I mean, they'll find all the information on there. Okay, excellent. You want to repeat that um, discount you're offering again? It's a 20% discount, um, yeah, on my, off all my website sales. Okay, excellent. Kellen, thank you very much. I know you must be busy as well. Uh, but your your passion rubs off. Um, I'm immediately going to put on some music and have a glass of wine. But, oh, um, I'm so glad for a Monday afternoon. I'm glad yeah, that that's what I'm inspired. And I'm sure you're <laughs> going to do. I'm sure you're going to do the same. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. And um, yeah, I'm sure our listeners will enjoy it. And um, yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world. Ciao ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.